In this lesson, we're going to be looking at fixed second law, and we're going to apply the law to the solution of a particular problem called the problem of the thin film. Let's examine how fixed second law was developed. First, we're going to look at a volume element, and that volume element is going to be described in terms of the uh, width of the element times the cross-sectional area. So we're looking at a region which is a uniform cross-section. We're going to be examining the flux that comes into the system and the flux that leaves the system. And what we can do is we can write a governing equation that describes the time-dependent change in composition of that volume element with respect to the flux coming in and going out. Now what we'll do is uh, rearrange these terms and when we uh, have rearranged these terms, what we wind up with is the change in composition is directly related to the change in flux uh, with respect to the region over which the diffusion process is occurring. And notice because we are diffusing uh, down the flux gradient, what we see is that change in concentration has a negative sign in front of it. Now, we know that we can write an expression for the actual flux in terms of the expression for um, fixed first law. So now what we can do is we can uh, substitute, and now we have an equation that relates the change in composition with respect to time on the left-hand side of the equation and the diffusivity on the right-hand side along with the second derivative of the change in composition with respect to position. So with all this information, we're now able to look at a process which is not necessarily a time-independent process. It could be very well time-dependent. Now let's examine the thin film. So we're going to look at two different materials, material A and B. And what we're doing is taking two semi-infinite slabs of A and between them, what we're going to do is to put a small amount of B that turns out to be completely soluble in A. So consequently, what we expect to see happen is as the diffusion process goes on, B moves into A and it moves there in uh, both directions from positive X to um, po uh, negative X. So here is our picture of what happens when we put these two together and we put the thin film in between. And it may be in order for us to see some reasonable diffusion, we might have to make sure that we prepare the surfaces that are in contact with one another to allow the diffusion process to occur readily without the uh, influence of an oxide film presenting, preventing the diffusion process. So here we are, our picture at some time, t is equal to zero. We put this whole thing in a furnace, and as a result of putting it in a furnace for a certain period of time, what we find is there is a distribution of B that goes into the left and a distribution of B that goes into the right. And what we're doing is along this uh, y-axis of this structure, we're plotting the composition. Now what you can see here is the behavior looks to be Gaussian, and you would expect it to be that way in that the diffusion process is an exponential process. So we see this behavior and this is what we anticipate. So I'm going to take a simple exponential function. C is the exponential of minus um, x squared. And I have graphed that function. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here and I'm going to take local derivatives as indicated by those red lines. If I, take where I, if I take each one of those points where I have taken, taken the first derivative, I have the first derivative then plotted as a function of composition uh, to the right. So I have the actual first, comp first derivative plotted next to the composition as a function of distance. This slide now contains three pieces of information. The first is the Gaussian behavior, which is the composition that we are uh, as a function of position that we begin with. Then the next graph is the derivative of that function. And then the uh, third graph that is superimposed is that of the associated second derivative. 
And if you go back in your review and think about what the meaning of the second derivative is, it's actually describing what the concavity of that particular function is that we are looking at. So the second derivative of C with respect to X tells us the, the concavity. Now, between the points that are indicated by the blue arrow, what we're going to see is the composition in this region winds up decreasing with time. And if we look at what happens on the outside of those points, what we're going to see is this is the region where the composition increases with respect to time. And those two red arrows that appear on the screen now represent the region where the concavity of the function is changing. In the portions between uh, the central region where the function is de decreasing, the concavity is negative, and over to the left of those uh, points and to the right of those points, we're seeing that the concavity is positive, and hence the composition is going to be increasing with time. Now, if we go back with respect to examining uh, fixed second law, and we think about it in terms of the concavity of the composition function, what we see is, here's fixed um, equation, and when the concavity is negative, we're seeing that the composition is decreasing with time. When the concavity is positive, what we're seeing is that the composition is increasing with time. Now, the point at which we have a change in concavity can also be used to identify the position um, as the diffusion process continues. So it can tell us about the extent of the diffusion process. And we can see that more quickly by looking at a series of plots where we have looked at different times and what you can see is that the function is spreading and you can see how the portions where we have concave down, what we're seeing is a decrease with respect to temperature and uh, in terms of composition and uh, when the function is concave up, what we're seeing is an increase. And we see those points where we change our concavity from negative to positive, what we're seeing is those points are moving with respect to time. So we can follow the process of, diff of diffusion that's occurring in this thin film. Now, the actual solution to this, including all of the boundary conditions of this particular function, is given in this slide. And what we see is we can describe the change in composition, not only with position, but with respect to time. So we have two variables here, and this is then a partial differential equation. Um, the term in the pre-exponential tells us about the geometry of the process, what's the cross-sectional area. It also describes for us how much mass we have in the material. And then in the exponential portion, X represents the location where we are examining the composition, and D and T have their normal meanings, D being the diffusivity, and T representing time. So what we're going to do then is to look at this equation and see how we might be able to modify this equation to describe um, another type of diffusion uh, that involves slightly, slightly different boundary conditions than the thin film. Thank you.